All right, we're going to do a new thing. Mojo, if you haven't been keeping up with Mojo and you don't know what Mojo is, by the way, no, it's not what Austin Powers lost in Austin Powers 3, but it is this new language in which it's supposed to be like Python or, or Python-esque or Python, makes Pythonistas happy, but gives you all the speed of all the good stuff, right? It, get, it get, has types. It allows for SIMDs nuts. It has all, it'll even do like variations on it to find the fastest amount of parallelization you should be using per problem. It has all these problems that are huge and Chris Latner I believe is the lead of this and he, the, the, he just open sourced it is that what we're seeing right here at modular open source is ingrained in our DNA we firmly believe for Mojo to reach its full potential it must be open source I do agree with that any programming language needs there's just a couple things that are just required to make an op, uh, a, a language super successful one it has to be open source Two, you have to deliver on the promises you make. So like V is a great example of this where they made a bunch of promises and people haven't felt like they have delivered. Therefore, there's this like there's the, there's a huge amount of distrust there. Uh, three tools, 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 and tools. It, you gotta have tools these days. If you try, to, if you're even remotely attempting creating a new language, if this thing doesn't come with, uh, if this thing doesn't come with a package manager, a build system, an LSP, a linter, and a formatter, like. Like it ain't happening. Hey Prime, how can Vim Motions help me in my day to day life? I will tell you later. You just hold on. We have been progressively open sourcing more of Mojo and parts of the Max platform. And today we're thrilled to announce the release of the core modules from the Mojo standard library under the Apache 2 license. We have always believed that building Mojo in the open will lead to a better result because it allows its design to be shaped by the feedback from the broader community. We released Mojo very early and have been driving steady improvements since May 2023. See the change log? Building a language and its infrastructure is hard work and takes time and we're excited to move our uh, from sharing our work to collaborating with Mojo developers worldwide. Okay. Okay. So does that mean Mojo itself self is still not Open source is that is that what I'm reading here correctly? We've been progressively open sourcing more more of Mojo and parts of Max. Release of the core modules. What are core modules? Is that is that how they're saying the standard library? Is that the same thing? Mojo is like a superset of 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 Python. I believe it has some extra requirements. It sounds like it, not entirely, but that's their intention. Yes, the standard. Okay, I'm I'm curious what's stopping them from open sourcing. So for those that don't realize why it could be difficult to open source, if you've never ran a large open source project, it takes like literally multiple people to just deal with open source. It's it's not easy to just open source a big project with a lot of eyes. Um, it can be very very. Um, it can be very difficult. Uh, I will tell you this much that when I did some open source work for Netflix, it was like 50% of my job was just like closing just tickets that you can spend five hours asking questions in, in issues or you could spend ten, five minutes reading the docs. Falcor mentioned. Yeah, Falcor mentioned. There are many ways to open source code. Some projects make source code available but do not accept contributions. Some provide opaque contribution process without visibility into goals and roadmaps. Some open source and they don't actively maintain it. <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, at, modul at Modular, our team has either built, contributed to, or driven incredible open source projects like LLVM, Swift, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. And we want to make sure we do things right. So that's some good street cred right there. I would say that that's some decent street cred for some open source credibility right there. Okay. What have you guys done? I don't know. Just like a little LLVM, Swift, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. Not a big deal. You wouldn't get it. You wouldn't understand. This means not just making source code available, but fostering and cultivating a vibrant and engaged open development community around Mojo. Fire. PyTorch code base sucks, though. <laughs> you know what? I got one for you. I want you to go create a better PyTorch right now. Okay, I want you to do that. I want you to go engage a community. I want you to get people excited. I want you to get thousands of people using it. And then I want you to make a better a better code base. I actually did a startup and then it failed. <laughs> yeah. Well, guess what? It doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like you have as much street street cred, buddy. Um, all right. Beyond just providing a source, we're opening up revision history for uh, let's see for the standard library, it releasing nightly builds of the Mojo compiler, providing public CI and allowing external contributions through GitHub pull requests. This is expensive and non-trivial uh, to set up. Yes, it is extremely expensive. You like, I mean, they literally have to pay multiple engineer out uh, like yearly salaries just to maintain something publicly. Uh, but in our experience. 
It's critically important to allow the community to scale. Absolutely. So why Apache 2? We chose the Apache License Version 2. It contains a patent grant provision, which provides legal protection to users and con uh, contributors of the software. The Apache 2 license is a widely used and proven license and is familiar to many individuals and companies across the industry. I actually have no idea anything about licensing. Okay, I, I, I genuinely have no idea about anything about licensing. Uh, one in the chat if you know anything about licensing. Not a lot of ones coming in right now. For how many people we have? Now watch this one. Type 420 in the chat if you know nothing about licenses. This is more reasonable here. You know why? Because that's how this thing works, okay? Uh, I don't know if you know this, but if you go to uh, Vim APM, which is... Or not Vim APM. Yeah, Vim APM, I believe, also has it. Let's go like this. Vim with me. I think I updated its license just recently. Right now, I have the good luck with that shit. No LLM's public license. Okay? So if you don't know the good luck with that shit license, it's pretty good. Okay? That means you're the one putting it on your computer. Like, that's your fault. That's not my fault. That's your fault. Okay? You're putting what I wrote on your computer. That's kind of a stupid idea. Good luck with that shit. Public license. Okay. Zero. You do whatever the fuck you want as long as you never leave a fucking trace to, to track the author of the original product or held responsible. That's it. You just hide that. Okay. Don't you dare try to tell people I did it. Don't you dare. That's all I, uh, that's all I request. We're keeping it simple. The Apache 2 license is a great start, but our experience with licensing in the LLVM project taught us that there are two small issues with it. Some people are concerned that the Apache 2 license may not mix well with GPL2 code, the Linux kernel, and the Apache 2 license requires that you acknowledge use of the code in derived projects. We want you to be able to use Mojo without requiring you to acknowledge modular or Mojo, though of course you are welcome to do so, and make it clear that it's fine to mix with GPL2 code. As such, we're including the LLVM exceptions, which were specifically designed to address these concerns. Oh, hey, that's pretty neat. I like that. I like that. Good job. Hey, good, good guy's mojo right there. You don't even have to cite us. You could if you want to, but you don't even have to. Thank you. I like that. I love, I like, I love using projects that are more lax on their licenses because I don't understand, again, I don't understand licenses and I don't understand how I'm going to get screwed by it at some point in the future, right? I don't, I, I, you know, I have no idea. I heard you were talking shit about Docker and development env. I love you though. Oh yeah, I think Docker and development is crazy, okay? Can we just take one second here? I don't see, I have absolutely no idea how this is a controversial take, but people get their, their feathers ruffled heavily from this, okay? If I had the developer's hierarchy of awesome, it would literally be all local, right? Everything you develop is local. It just works. It's easy to run. That's that. Next would be like, you can do it local, but there's like dev containers in here, right? There's some, there's a little bit of Docker. You got to do a little bit of the, doing a little bit of Dockering through it. And then of course the worst part of the triangle, which is the bottom part of the triangle, which is for a few people, which is you actually just dev on a, pro, a prod machine. I've done this. Dev and prod. I've done this. Okay. We've all done this. You know, you've done this. I've done this. You've done this. It's the worst. Okay. Don't do this. Who here has not edited some code in production at least once in your life, okay? Come on, we've all done it. We've all done it. Devin mentioned, let's go. Come on, don't even try to be like, oh, I would never do such a thing. Yes, you would and you have. Don't, you're not better than anybody else, okay? But local, like if you can be purely local dev, it's just nicer. You know what I mean? It just is. It will always be nicer. Docker is pretty nice too, right? Like if you can throw up like a, just like your database, in Docker or a couple items in Docker, that's kind of nice. But we all know that eventually that it gets shitty, okay? Like developing only in Docker, ugh. 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 We believe this represents the state-of-the-art open source licensing for language and tool projects and recommend other Mo Mojo open source projects to follow the same approach. We've been using this approach for our existing open source code and will continue to release more code with the same approach. All right, all right, all right. I like it. Early stages of our open source journey, the Mojo standard library is under heavy development and changing rapidly. So we've st started by open sourcing its core modules. S Let's see. As such, we consider this to be an important starting point, not an end at our open source journey. We'll sim let's see. We'll similarly similarly evolve and iterate our development and contribution process as we learn together with the community. We'll be opening up a lot more code over time, including more of Mojo parts and the broader Max platform. Okay, so what I would I really am curious 
if they could give us like a statement of things that they're not going to open source, I think would be really nice. Can we all agree to that? Like, what aren't you open sourcing? If you could just be like, hey, here's the parts we'll never open source. And here's the reasons why we'll never open source it. If it's some sort of like way for them to be able to make money, be able to do this, that and the other, like, I totally get that. I'm not, you know, I'm not against several engineers making something awesome and then making uh, money off it. I just want to know what they aren't planning on doing. You know what I mean? Uh, all right, we'll skip over the contributions. I assume you can just read you can just read that, right? Nightly builds for fast iteration. Nightly builds and Mojo compiler are also now available. Awesome. Uh, this allows you to test your contributions to the standard library against the latest version of Mojo compiler that corresponds to the library source. This is a massive step uh, towards opening development of Mojo compiler and allows magicians Python with types, magicians. <laughs> what is more cringe, magicians or Pythonistas? What, what do you call what do you call a rust person? Do you call them like cuck lords? Like what do you call them? Oh, rustation. Oh, okay, that's way off. <laughs> I was I was way off. I didn't realize that one. <laughs> Acoustic. <laughs> They're acousticians. Okay, you wouldn't understand. You wouldn't understand. Okay, I'm trying not to get like I remember we're considering this like as a full a full time job here. Okay, trying not to get banned this fast. After watching Casey's performance video, I do think maybe increasing Python speed by thirty five thousand is actually possible. <laughs> full time full time canceled. Let's go. Brian's on hinge day. Am I? Let's see. Uh, to live in the bleeding edge of development if they choose and test against the current tree over time, we'll expand the this nightly build to include the entire Max platform. Make sure to check out the standard library development guide for details on how to get nightly builds. All right, version control history. Uh, I assume we're releasing not only the code, but also our commit history for the standard library. Do, how much cleanup do you think happened? Real talk, how much cleanup do you think happened? How many, shit, fuck. Why doesn't this work? Squash me later. <laughs> Just like you, you know, you know, there's like an entire there's like an entire set of points there. Just like, Meow. um. Anyways, Prime, I'm uh the Amazonian dad with questions the other day. You're the Amazonian dad. What does that even mean? Get commit this time, maybe. Yeah. Squash me harder, daddy. Yep, I, that's a good one. All right, we're very excited about the future of Mojo and all the applications that people are already using it for. We think this is a big step forward in openness and transparency. Yes, again, I would just love to hear what are you what are you going to open source? What aren't you going to open source? What are you iffy on open sourcing? Um, yeah, because I think everybody, if, 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 if you don't understand why it's difficult to open source, that's okay. I don't think you need to explain why it's so difficult. I think you pretty much say it right there. It takes a lot of money and time to open source anything that's, that has a large amount of people, and they want to be able to do it well. Totally, totally get that. It does. It is expensive and non-trivial to set up. Not even expensive and non-trivial to set up. It's expensive and non-trivial to set up and to continue doing well. Open source is extremely expensive. It is. That's why you should you should give to Neovim people. Open collective slash Neovim. Go do it. The name is I think I could I think there does exist a world where I like Mojo. You know what I mean? There does exist a world where I could be a, a magician, I think. Open source does not equal communism. Don't even try that with me, okay? Okay. Okay, open source is opt-in. Okay. So don't even try that with me. Don't even try that with me. The name is open source is not communism, and I'm not getting baited into having a communism debate today, okay? This is not how we're doing it. Open source is much closer to charity than it is to communism, okay? So we're not doing this. I'm not getting triggered. Why the hell would you say that? A gin. 